Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10, Theseus and the Minotaur. King Minos was the powerful, legendary ruler of Crete, son of Zeus himself, but he is perhaps most famous for becoming the tyrant that demanded the tribute of children to feed the horrific Minotaur. The Minotaur was a creature of his own making. He offended the gods by keeping a beautiful white bull that was supposed to be sacrificed. As punishment, Zeus became angry and caused Minos' wife, Queen Pasiphae, to fall in love with the bull, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a monster. It was half bull and half human and would only eat human blood. King Minos was embarrassed but refused to kill the Minotaur since it was given to him by the gods. The creature was so powerful that no cage could contain it and the king could not control it with words or deeds. So King Minos built a megalithic labyrinth underneath his palace on the island of Crete to hold the beast. After many years at war, the king lost his handsome son to Athens. He was so angry, he brutally crushed the Athenians, and in revenge, each year demanded tribute of Athenian youths to feed the Minotaur. They had to be nobles, young and attractive in the prime of their life. In the third year that the sacrifices were to be given to the Minotaur, the people of Athens were tired. Prince Theseus volunteered to be one of the young men. His plan was to kill the Minotaur and end the human sacrifices. When they arrived, the 14 sacrificial victims were locked up to wait until morning, sharing stories about the terrifying beast and its strong limbs and cruel eyes. During the night, Princess Ariadne brought a sword to Prince Theseus as she knew the Minotaur was a terrible beast that must be stopped and that the maze was a horrible place. She told the prince the labyrinth was built with so many twists and turns that it was meant to make you lose your mind with fear and worry and hunger. Along with the sword, she gave him a ball of yarn so he could find his way out. In the maze, Theseus felt his way in the darkness trying to remember the twists and turns and he could feel bones crunch beneath his feet. Suddenly the beast was upon him and he plunged his sword into its heart. Theseus killed the beast and returned home a hero, along with his princess. Number 9. Medusa and Perseus Medusa is without a doubt one of the creepiest creatures in Greek mythology. She was one of the three sisters known together as the Gorgons. They were Stheno, Euryale, and Medusa. Medusa was the only mortal sister, while the other two were immortal and therefore couldn't die. There are actually a lot of myths surrounding the Gorgons, but the most popular is the one of Medusa and Perseus. Perseus was a demigod, the son of Zeus and an ordinary woman. Perseus' grandfather, king of Argos, had heard a prophecy that his daughter's son would grow up to kill him. For this reason, he had her locked in a bronze chamber. But Zeus managed to get in and impregnate her anyway. Once the king found out what had happened, he hurled both Perseus and his mother into the sea, with both of them trapped inside a wooden chest. There was a lot of adventure, they were ultimately rescued, and Perseus' mother fell in love with a man named Polydectes. But Perseus and his mom's new lover did not like each other. In fact, Polydectes wanted to get rid of Perseus. He tricked him into going after Medusa. She had serpents for hair, wings, huge claws, and enormous teeth. She was also able to turn men to stone if they so much as glanced at her face. Clever and resourceful Perseus bested her anyway, and when he returned back home, he was so upset with Polydectes that he used Medusa's severed head to turn him into stone. Number 8. Scylla and Charybdis Scylla and Charybdis were terrible sea monsters that lurked in the strait between Sicily and the Italian mainland. They preyed on mariners, either by destroying their boats or by eating them. Scylla had six heads and twelve feet. Charybdis had the form of a whirlpool. Both creatures were utterly terrible, but Charybdis was definitely the worst. She was the daughter of Poseidon and Gaia, punished by Zeus because she was too lustful. He hit her with a thunderbolt, which throttled her down into the strait where she became a whirlpool and got through her days by sinking ships. Scylla was infinitely creepier. She was said to be a mortal human at one point who had an affair with Poseidon, god of the sea. But she also had an affair with King Minos of Crete and another sea god named Glaucus. 
all of her affairs got her transformed into a disgusting creature by a sorceress named Amphitrite, who was also Poseidon's consort. Amphitrite turned Scylla into a monster because she was jealous. Amphitrite snuck up on Scylla while she was bathing and covered her in magic herbs. The next thing Scylla knew, she was horribly ugly. She could only make dog noises, she had too many legs and too many heads, and she was banished to inhabit caves and sea cliffs. She spent the rest of time hunting fish and men who dared get too close. Number 7. Kronos the Titan Kronos was the creepy titan who ate all of his children. He also happened to be the father of the gods and the son of the sky. Kronos was fathered by Uranus and Gaia, Gaia being the mother earth. Kronos was told by prophecy that he would eventually be dethroned by his son. To avoid such a thing from happening, each time one of his children was born, he would eat them. But his wife Rhea wasn't super happy about this for obvious reasons. When she gave birth to his final son, a little boy that would grow up to be Zeus, she instead handed the child over to Gaia for protection. To trick the great titan, Rhea replaced Zeus with a rock swaddled like a baby. When Zeus grew up, he forced Kronos to vomit up all of his siblings who had been living inside his stomach. Then together, the freed siblings, known as the Olympians, defeated the titans and took their place on Mount Olympus. It's important to note that the story of Zeus and Kronos may reach much further than Greek mythology. In the time that Kronos ruled, it was said that there was no sorrow or sickness and the world was pure. But when Zeus took over, everything turned to chaos and strife. Some historians believe the biblical tale of the fall of man may have been inspired by this very myth. Number 6. Erisichthon of Triopas Erisichthon was the son of Triopas, king of Thessaly. Erisichthon's story has to do with the destruction of nature and its deadly consequences. As a relatively powerful man, he ordered that every tree in the sacred grove of the goddess Demeter be chopped down and removed. But while the work was happening, a man came upon a tree covered in votive wreaths. These wreaths were symbolic of the prayers that the goddess Demeter had answered. The man refused to cut the tree down, so Erisichthon took his axe and cut it down for him. By doing this, he destroyed the forest and ended up cursed. The curse was that he would have insatiable hunger. Demeter was the one who punished Erisichthon by putting the spirit of unrelenting hunger, named Limos, in his belly. The more that Erisichthon ate, the hungrier he got. He ended up selling all his worldly goods to buy more and more food, but nothing would satisfy him. When he finally ran out of money and was still as hungry as could be, he sold his own daughter into slavery. In the end, perpetually starved and completely miserable, Erisichthon wound up literally eating himself, arms, legs, body, and all. What do you think of Demeter's revenge? Did the punishment fit the crime? Let me know in the comments below. Number 5. Zeus and Europa the tale of Zeus and Europa is about as perverse as it gets. Europa was a Phoenician woman whose mother was named Phoenix. There are different versions of the story, with Europa being the daughter of Poseidon and a mortal. Either way, her parents ruled the Phoenician city of Tyre. She was also beautiful and caught the attention of Zeus. Anyone who has studied Greek mythology knows by now that Zeus was a huge creep. He saw the young girl picking flowers and playing on the beach. Naturally, he needed to have her as his own, and because Zeus always got his way, he simply went down and took her. He transformed himself into a white bull and got close to Europa and her friends as they were playing. At first, Europa didn't trust the bull. After all, where does a great white bull come from if not to trick you? Well, Zeus, in the form of the bull, laid at Europa's feet and seemed to fall asleep. It was enough to put down Europa's defenses. She climbed onto the animal's back, and that was when Zeus got up and ran away with the girl in tow. He literally kidnapped her. Zeus took Europa to the island of Crete. He then did what Zeus does. As a prisoner on the island, Europa gave birth to several sons. One of these sons fought in the Trojan War, another became a judge in the underworld, and a third became King Minos, whose wife would later carry on with a bull as well and give birth to the Minotaur like I told you before. What's really bizarre about the case of Europa is her story never really wrapped up. There is no end. She just kind of fulfilled her purpose and that was it. 
But then again, she didn't completely vanish. The entire continent of Europe is still named after her. Number 4. King Pentheus King Pentheus was the ruler of Thebes, the son of Echion and the brother of Epeiros. He inherited the throne from his grandfather Cadmus. But one of the first things Pentheus did as ruler was to ban people from worshipping Dionysus, the god of wine. Naturally, this caused Dionysus to get extremely angry. In the god's anger, he manipulated all the women in the city of Thebes to go insane and climb to the top of Mount Scytheron. What happened next makes the story of Pentheus truly strange. Dionysus convinced Pentheus to go to the top of the mountain and see what the women were doing. Pentheus, dressed as a lady, climbed to the top of the mountain and saw that the women were engaging in frenzied adult activities. Not understanding what in the world was going on, he climbed up a tree to get a better view. But as he was climbing the tree, the women spotted him and thought he was a wild animal. Because they were still frenzied and insane, they ripped him down from the tree and tore him apart, literally ripping his limbs off. The first woman to attack also happened to be his mother, who only realized what she and the other woman had done when Dionysus removed their madness and let them return to the city. The moral of this bizarre story for the ancient Greeks was to never shun their gods, otherwise you would get torn limb from limb by your own family. Number 3. Hercules The true story of Hercules is one of the most tragic in all of Greek mythology. You might already know that Hercules' father was Zeus. He left Mount Olympus, seduced a mortal woman, and not long after, Hercules was born. But Zeus's wife, Hera, was not super impressed with the god and his constant sleeping around. He had too many illegitimate children, and she didn't like it. In the case of Hercules' mother, Zeus actually took her to bed as a trick. He disguised himself as her husband, snuck into her bed, and got her pregnant. When Hera learned about this, she decided to kill Hercules. She sent a pair of snakes to strangle Hercules in his sleep. But of course, even as a baby, he was way too strong and he killed the snakes. Hercules ended up getting married to a woman named Megara and having three strong sons with her. But Hera was still angry. She used her godly powers to influence Hercules and turn him insane. Under her influence, he murdered his wife and all three of his children. Naturally, he was heartbroken and distraught. He went to seek punishment for the horrible crime that he had committed. To atone for his murderous sins, Hercules had to undergo the twelve labors. He had to kill the Nemean lion, slay the hydra, clean King Aegeus' stables in a single day, capture some man-eating horses, and he even went all the way to Africa to steal cows from a monster with three heads and six legs known as the Geryon. To sum everything up, Hercules brutally murdered his family after Zeus was a creep and pretended to be his mother's husband just to get some action. Why was that behavior the fault of Hercules? You'd have to ask Hera. Number 2. Orestes and Agamemnon Orestes was just a child when his father, King Agamemnon, went off to fight in the Trojan War. While Agamemnon was away, his wife took a secret lover named Aegisthus. The main reason she took a secret lover was to get revenge on her husband, who had sacrificed their daughter to Artemis, the virginal goddess of the moon, wind and the hunt, so that their ships would reach Troy in a timely fashion. When the war was over and Agamemnon returned to Mycenae, his wife was there waiting for him with her new lover. Together, they slaughtered the king and the woman's boyfriend stole the throne. But the real heir to the throne was Orestes. Fearing for his safety, his sister Electra took him away to live with King Strophius of Phocis. And here's where the creepy part comes in. Orestes grew into a man and vowed to get revenge for his father's death. He visited the Oracle of Delphi, who said the only way to get vengeance was to kill his mother and the false king. He went back to Mycenae, met up with his sister, and together they plotted to kill their very own mother and their stepfather. But this wasn't a happy ending for anybody. After killing his mother, thereby committing matricide, a trio of female spirits of justice named the Furies chased Orestes and drove him insane. He only managed to get away from them by going on yet another long journey, then coming back to become the proper ruler of Mycenae. He even married Hermione, the daughter of Helen of Sparta. Number 1. Atreus and Thyestes 
Atreus and Thyestes were the sons of King Pelops, who also had another son with a mistress. But their mother, King Pelops' wife Hippodamia, was not into having stepchildren. So when her sons grew older, she asked that they kill the son of the mistress. Atreus and Thyestes willingly agreed to murder their stepbrother. Then they went out and took action. But King Pelops wasn't impressed by his sons killing his other son. It was all just bad news, so Atreus and Thyestes had to leave town. They went to the city of Mycenae, became friends with the king, and Atreus eventually inherited the throne. If this is hard to follow so far, welcome to Greek mythology. Everybody seems to be having an affair with everyone and killing all of their family members. When Atreus inherited the throne of Mycenae, his brother happened to be having an affair with his wife. Atreus is then tricked by Thyestes into handing over the throne. Now Atreus has lost his power, his wife has left him, and he has nothing. But at least he's clever. Atreus says to his brother that if he can make the sun go backward in the sky, he would get his throne back. His brother agrees, thinking that it's impossible. Atreus then asks Zeus to pull the trick off for him, which ultimately rewards Atreus with the throne. It was a classic switcheroo. But Atreus is still furious with his brother. He invites him over for dinner one night under the pretense that they're going to settle their issues. There is a great big feast prepared and everything seems to be going in the direction of a happy ending. That is, until halfway through the meal, when Atreus reveals that they were actually eating Thaistis' sons. Atreus had tricked his brother into eating his own children. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite tale from Greek mythology? Let me know in the comments below and remember to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time. Bye!